In this video, I'm going to show you how interactive video works in the all-new Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to share this video with all of your e-learning friends. As I was thinking about what topic to cover next, I realized that while I did do interactive video with the previous version of Adobe Captivate, I haven't covered interactive video for the all new Adobe Captivate or Captivate 12, if you will. So let's take a look. So I have a project here and it's about sea turtles and I want to include a video about sea turtles. And you could just give people a video about sea turtles, but the problem with video just by itself is it's not very interactive. It's passive, right? You're gonna sit there, you're gonna watch the video. If you're not that interested, you might not pay attention. You might be busy texting your girlfriend. And that's obviously what we don't want. We want people to be involved in our e-learning. We want them to be engaged. And the best way to do that is to make it interactive. So interactive video is a concept where you take a video and you add elements to it over top of the video that your learners interact with. So that's what we're gonna do here today. Now, the first thing I need obviously is to add that video. So I'm gonna click on the add media blocks icon in my left-hand toolbar, and we're gonna select slide video. Now you might be inclined to select video video, but the problem with video video is that it doesn't run with the timeline of your project. So you can't time things to happen at a particular moment during the video. And that's where slide video is the best way to go. So let's go ahead and add slide video. And I like to do a few things to my slide videos up front. The first thing I wanna do is have them fill as much of my slide as possible. And of course, if we go into the properties inspector underneath alignment and spacing, we can increase the width of that video to 100%. And you can see here, it really fills that out. Probably a good best practice is to choose auto fit height, and that's going to use the full height of this particular slide. And of course, there are other options that you could choose from the design options, but we're gonna keep this fairly basic and straightforward here. Now, I don't necessarily wanna use this default video that's included when you add slide video. So I can do one of two things. I can either click on the replace video icon in the middle of the video itself, or with the video selected, I can go over to the properties inspector and add video from the content section, the video source section here. I'm gonna do that now. It's gonna prompt me to select my video from the assets library. Probably pretty unlikely that your video that you need is there. While there's some neat videos for like maybe title slides just to make it engaging, you know, something specific to a particular training course is probably not going to be found there. You can also choose web, which means you can put in the URL of a video that's on YouTube or a video that's on Vimeo. I recommend that you use your own videos that have been uploaded to YouTube or Vimeo. If you use someone else's, you should probably get their permission. They also may not have enabled embedding, which means it may not work for you anyway. The final thing is system, and that's what I'm gonna to do today. System just simply means I'm selecting a video that happens to be on my computer right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select system here, and I'm going to navigate to where I have my video. It's on my desktop right now. Incidentally, this was originally a video that was well over 100 megabytes, and if you'd like to learn how to optimize it for e-learning and get it down to six megabytes, like I have it here, take a look at the link in the upper right-hand corner if you wanna watch that video. But let's take a look at this, and we'll add that to our slide here. Now, sometimes the video doesn't appear right away. Just clicking to another slide and returning to it, there we go, there's the video that I want in this case here. Now, interactive video works off of bookmarks that can be added to any slide, but in particular, they can certainly be added to slide video slides like this case here. So I'm gonna need a few bookmarks for this particular interaction to work the way I want it to work. I'm gonna start with clicking on the ruler on my timeline with the playhead. One second is fine there, it doesn't really matter in this case here. 
and I'm going to click on the Diamond Plus icon to create a new bookmark. I'm going to call this bookmark something. We'll call it Video Start, something like that. Press Enter, and you'll see that up here. Now, I actually want to drag this to the very beginning of my slide here because when someone uses this for navigation purposes, I want them to go right to the very beginning of the video. I just find it easier to create that bookmark, not right up against the beginning of the slide. The warning symbol is that I haven't set an action for this video. In this example, I don't need to. So I can ignore this warning symbol here and just focus on the next bookmark that I need to create here. Now, in this case here, I'm going to use this slide here as an overlay. This contains an accordion widget, which you know users will be able to interact with and learn a little bit more about sea turtles than what's included in the video. If you're wondering, I've got the background sort of this gray color, but what in fact is happening here is that right on the slide itself, and I've gone up to the slide level for this slide, I've gone in and set the background instead of the default of 100%, as you can see here, down to 0%. So whatever I put this over top of as an overlay will show through and kind of create a neat effect. So let's go ahead and add that to our first slide here. Let's open up our timeline here. And let's say at the four second mark, we want to show the accordion interaction here. So I'm gonna click on the plus icon here and I'll just type in sea turtle info or something like that. You can call these things whatever you wish. Now this one does have a warning symbol letting me know that there isn't an action associated with it. So that's something I'm gonna set up. Essentially what's gonna happen is this slide will play, we'll be watching the video, and then we'll get to four seconds and then our overlay will appear. To do that, we're gonna click on select an action and we'll click on more and we'll scroll down till we find add overlay. And in this case, we can choose any slide we wish that qualifies to be an overlay slide. Basically, even question slides can be overlay slides, but they can only be knowledge checks. And of course, any other slide as well. In this case here, I'll select the accordion interaction and we'll click on done. Now notice what's happened here. It has tucked up our overlay slide underneath the video slide and you see this little icon here which represents that this is an overlay slide. So that's all fine and good. You won't be able to navigate to this slide any other way other than to see it through the interactive video. If you need a second copy of it, I recommend that you duplicate that slide before you add it as an overlay slide here. So let's move along our timeline here. And let's say, for example, we want to check people's knowledge of what they've been learning through this video at approximately the eight second mark. So I'm going to click on the eight second mark here, and I'm going to click on the plus diamond icon there, and we're going to call this check knowledge. Okay, press enter to accept that. And the action will be very similar to this. We're going to select an action. We're going to go to more. And we're going to look for add overlay slide. In this case, we're adding that knowledge check question slide. Click done, and that's taken care of. If we take a look at the knowledge check slide, again, I've done something very similar with the background to allow it to show through. I first of all set it up so that there was a card so that you could isolate the text in the question slide from the background. And under appearance, we set that solid color to 0%. So this way, the video will kind of show through outside of the card here. It'll give us a nice effect here. Okay, let's go back to our video slide here and we will move along the timeline. And at the 12 second mark, we're gonna show our final slide, which is also going to be an overlay slide, but this one's kind of unique. It's a web object. So we're gonna be able to actually visit the Sea Turtle website. So that's gonna be kind of cool. Let's click our plus diamond icon here and we'll just type in web for website there. 
the action for that like before will be under more and we'll add overlay and we'll select our final slide for the interactive video here click done and we're pretty much good to go with the slide now there's a couple of things that we need to do with our overlay slide so let's start with the accordion interaction here I'm just going to get rid of the timeline here. Now, this is the standard accordion interaction. And once you've clicked on all three of these accordion elements, you're going to see the continue button becomes enabled and you can press that. Now, normally you think of a continue button as go to next slide or jump to a particular slide. In this case, we want to do a little bit different action here. So we're going to go into actions and under more, we're looking to resume the timeline because we want to resume the video at the point where we paused and showed this overlay. So a little bit different than probably what you're used to, but very easy to do. And we'll just click done. That takes care of our sea turtles overlay. Let's look at the knowledge check slide here. Now this one I'm giving unlimited attempts to find the correct answer. This is again, just a knowledge check. It's not a final exam or anything like that. But on success, once they finally found the right answer, we want the click anywhere or press Y to continue to do the same thing we did on the accordion widget slide. And that of course is to resume timeline again. So let's click done. And last but not least, we'll go down to our web object where we show people the turtlefoundation.org website. And instead of a continue button, instead we have a restart video button. So I can select that and this action will be a little bit different. This is quite useful when you have bookmarks because you can use the bookmarks as a form of navigation. So let's click on more and we're going to look for jump to bookmark. Here's a list of all of our bookmarks that we put on slide number one. Remember video start. This was the first bookmark we made. We're going to use that to restart the video. So I'll select that and press done. And I think we're pretty much good to see how this works. Let's go back to slide one and let's preview this in our browser and see what it looks like. I didn't mention this before, but because of the nature of overlays and having a play bar is probably just not very practical. So I turned off my play bar in this case here and only way to navigate is using the controls that I've provided here. So let's start our video. Awesome video of sea turtles. Now we're seeing our, our first overlay. This is the accordion widget. Notice continue is grayed out no matter how often I press it, I can't move forward. And we'll go ahead and we'll explore the accordion widget here. Once we visited all the sections, of course, the continue button is now enabled and that will resume our timeline and resume the video. We'll see the next overlay here is a little bit of a knowledge check here. Let's get it wrong first. Press submit. Oh, that's incorrect. Try again. Sometimes over a hundred years. Press submit. That's correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue the rest of our video. And finally, our web object page here. There's the turtlefoundation.org website. And this is all well and good. Now I want to take a look at it. I could either exit the course at this point or I can restart the video if I want to watch it all over again. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.